Reformation. Then there will be great tribulation such as has not been from the beginning of the world until now, no and never will be. And if those days had not been cut short, no human being would be saved. But for the sake of the elect, those days will be cut short. Then if anyone says to you, look, here is the Christ, or there he is, do not believe. Servant of the Most High, unabashed, unafraid. I am Christopher Manti, and this is Frontline. Yes, my friends, welcome back to Frontline. It is your humble host, Christopher Manti, back with you as always, 5 p.m. here on the east coast of the United States on July the 6th, 2015, year of the Shemitah. And I sincerely appreciate you being with me today. Very special broadcast here of Frontline here on CMV TV Live. I appreciate you very much if you're watching live on the stream right now. You can chat. In the lower right, you'll see a button that says live chat. Click here, click there. Log in with Twitter or Facebook and chat away, my friends. And if you're not live, you can watch on demand on the archive page at CMV TV or at my YouTube channel, Manti7000. If you are watching that through that format, you've already found it. So I thank you for that as well. First and foremost, we thank the God of heaven and earth. Father, thank you once again for this opportunity to witness for you, to speak your word, and to give a platform to those who you are speaking through. And I thank you for our brother, Rodrigo, and for all our listeners and viewers here now, Lord. Let them do your will and penetrate us with your Holy Spirit as we accept your Son, Yeshua the Messiah, and go about his business, your business, doing it his way, submitted to you, you are holy. Holy, holy, Father. Thank you for being you, for sending your Son to die in our place. We certainly deserve it, but now we are justified. Wash clean if we repent, and we do, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right, welcome. Frontline exists for the glory of the Lord of hosts, Yahuwah. You might call him Jehovah or Yahweh, but <clears throat> regardless, he is the one true God with Jesus and the Holy Spirit three and one and we acknowledge that and I uh, want to glorify and honor him in every way and that is the purpose of this broadcast and nothing else and th the days to come before his return is central and that is my um, ministry my mission so to speak is to um, learn about it and tell folks what I know and predicated all in the written word of God. It's all right here. There's no special revelation. There's no private interpretation. It's all been revealed. And the farther along we go, the more we will see, the clearer we will see. And there are prophets today. Um, I just felt I sh that just came in there. Uh, if you deny that there are, you want to think again. And it's... You know, it doesn't mean there are new books of the Bible are coming. It just means that the Lord speaks today as he did yesterday through his people 
And uh, there are different gifts in the church, of course. Prophecy is one of them. So we want to be keen to listen. When there's a teacher, and a prophetic teacher like Rodrigo Silva, who is, how do I say this, in the most humble way possible, a very humble man, um, does not seek the spotlight on himself whatsoever. And it took him a long time to write a book that has just come out a few months ago called The Coming Bible Prophecy Reformation. You are about to hear an interview with him, an extended, an extensive interview with him. As far as I know, it's an exclusive uh, because he does it's he doesn't like to do interviews. He's a very private man. So I'm so uh, honored and glad that he would give this opportunity to me to bring the message out and to hopefully spur you on to learn more and to question everything you've been taught about prophecy and about uh, where we should be looking for this final kingdom to come that will bring the Antichrist, that will bring the persecution of the Jews and the church that we all know is coming, or we should know. And what you may know, or think you know, may be wrong. So prepare to be shaken up a little bit. All right? Uh, of course, in the world, just uh, we are living in it still, and you'll hear in the interview um, a reference to the Greek uh, situation that it was just reaching ahead uh, when the interview took place, but now it's official. The Greece is um, um, chosen to uh, not be a part of the uh, of Europe, basically. I mean, we'll see how it shakes out here and how long it takes, but Europe is collapsing. That's the bottom line, and I hope it would wake the church up to realize that we shouldn't be expecting it to hold or to do anything um, prophetically because it's not in there. That's what I'm telling you. And uh, this is the message that Rodrigo uh, is going to elaborate on, and I hope you would be open to that. Greece is falling, um, the first domino of many, I'm sure, and we want to be um, ever watchful because there's more than enough action uh, in the countries that are mentioned in the Word of God and that do matter, like Egypt and the ancient region of Babylon, modern Iraq and Syria, the ancient kingdom of Assyria, which is northern Iraq, Turkey, biblical nation, kingdom of Persia, which is Iran, so forth and so on. I teach you about this every week, to where to pay attention, because that's what the book says. It'd be easy enough to name Rome. Very easy. So, without any further ado, and we'll talk uh, when the interview's over about some other things, but I know this is why you're here. So I will not make you wait any longer. This is the Frontline Program with Christopher Manti. I appreciate you being with me. And let us go now to Mr. Rodrigo Silva, exclusively here on Frontline. Frontline is Christopher Manti, as always, and joining me live via Skype right now, Rodrigo Silva, a, a very uh, in-demand man in the prophecy world and the author of a fairly new book called The Coming Bible Prophecy Reformation. And I was happy to uh, contribute to that 
uh, work as far as uh, an ad that we did with Armageddon News. It was uh, terrific to work with Mr. Silva. So I thank you, sir, for being on the air with us today. Today, thank you so yeah. much. Thank you, thank you for having me. Yes, sir. So first of all, and Joel Richardson, who I talked to a couple weeks ago, right out of the gates, brought you up. I, I didn't mention you at all. Boom! Here's here's Rodrigo thrown out there. So um, he mentioned you as kind of a forerunner in this whole movement on this paradigm of the Islamic Antichrist and how we should be looking to the Middle East and not to Europe, etc. So let's rewind all the way yeah. and say, okay, Rodrigo, how did you get involved in this? How did you get started in this topic at all? And and it turns out, like you say, the book that we just released was actually written several years ago. So tell us about that, if you could, please. Yeah, I'm glad you men mentioned Joel, because Joel and I have been in touch way before he became this giant in the Christian media. We have been in touch for about seven, eight years now. And uh, um, I remember when one article that I wrote back in 2008 talking about the Assyrian origin of the Antichrist. Uh, this article was posted by Prophezine, and my article was posted along with one of Joel's articles. And Joel was not even famous at the time. And I had never heard of Joel before. And then I came to know Joel through Prophezine in 2008. And this was way before his book was republished under a new title, The Islamic Antichrist. And he, was, he actually invited me to write an endorsement for that book. If you go through the first pages, you're going to see my name mentioned there. And I was very thankful because I didn't expect such a thing to happen. You know, and Joel jo was becoming this giant and I was actually getting away from prophecy because I was going through personal problems at the time. But uh, going back to when I started, uh, before I became a Christian, I used to be a musician. And in 2003, I met my wife in a restaurant. And she was a backslidden Christian at the time. And then after we were dating for a couple months, she told me, I am a Christian and I need to go back to church. And if you do not come to church with me, we cannot stay together any, any longer. So I decided to give her a chance. And the first time I stepped into a church, uh, the, preacher, the preacher was giving a lecture on the book of Revelation. And that thing fascinated me so much that I decided to know more about it. And soon after I became a Christian, I began to study Bible prophecy. But I, I made the same mistake that everybody else makes, which is we pay attention to books and more books, and we don't pay attention to the Bible. And I myself became a believer in this European Antichrist or Roman Antichrist teaching that was being promoted by many people out there. But uh, as I was studying and reading books and more books and, you know, the famous authors like Mark Hitchcock, Hal Lindsey, Tim LaHaye, I... One day I heard the voice of the Holy Spirit talk to me and say, why don't you pay attention to my word instead of buying all these books? So what I did is I decided to start re reading through the prophets. And I began to see all this mention of the Assyrian, the king of Babylon. And one day as I was reading through Revelation 13, I saw the verse where, where it talks about the, the beast that looks like a leopard and has the mouth of a lion and the feet of a bear and I'm like wait a minute this is talking about the old empires that were mentioned in Daniel chapter 7 and immediately I saw that there was a combination or a geopolitical uh, conglomeration of all the uh, previous empires of Daniel all mixed together in one single entity called the beast and as I decided to look further I realized that uh, the European common market antichrist theory began to fall apart, at least to me, personally. And then I began to do some research. I found books. Uh, I want to show you some of the books that I, that I, that I found. I found mm. this book here, uh, Daniel by G. H. Lang. This book was written back in 1938. This was only 20 years after the, the abolishment of the Islamic Caliphate in Turkey. And back then, G. H. Lang already wrote that uh, the caliphate had to return in the future and that the antichrist would be from islam not from 
Rome or the, pa the papacy in, in the Vatican. Uh, and also, as I was reading one day through, uh, everybody knows John Walworth, right? Mm -hmm. This yeah. famous Bible scholar. And in, in one of his chapters, he mentions a book written by, De uh, by Geoffrey King, which was written back in 1956. This is the book right here. Nice. And back then, G. H. Lang in 1938 and and Geoffrey King in 1956, they were telling readers that the fourth beast of Daniel was not Rome, but the Islamic Empire of the seventh and eighth century. And most people today they assume this is a new idea that uh, Walid Shabat came with this idea, and then Joe Richard Richardson popular popularized the idea, but it's not true. This thing, this thing has been going on for, for 80, 80 years now. Right, and I thank you for pointing that out because most folks, I think, assume what you just said, that it's it's a fad, right? It's a, it's yeah. a new popular thing right now. We see ISIS and this, these terrible atrocities by Islam, and all of a sudden we're jumping ship uh, under this new thing, and it's going to be wrong just like all the other things have been wrong. But... It's so uh, critical to point out, and not only it, folks like yourself, you know, 10, 15 years ago were saying it, but folks 80 years ago were saying it and writing it and documenting it. Yeah. And um, it, it's this is a big, I think it's a big hang up from a lot of uh, people who, who know even most other aspects of Bible prophecy and they have it right in the spirits leading them and, and all these things, but they miss this ingredient because... They just assume it's it's uh, a fad, and they don't want to be involved in that. They'll just stick with what they uh, what they believe, and that's it. So I, I appreciate your and actually having the books is phenomenal. Uh, and we're going to of course link to all this stuff uh, afterwards on the broadcast. But um, this is very critical to understand that it's not a new thing, and it's not a craze. And like you mentioned, G. H. Lang. I mean, these guys are big deals, and. Um, and nothing has changed, uh, not only with that interpretation, but the how you interpret the scriptures, right? The yes. revelation is, uh, some people, I find a lot of believers just kind of want to separate it out and put it on the shelf like that's a thing, and then there's the rest of the New Testament over here. I just keep telling folks, look, all it is, to me, revelation is just a big quotation of the Old Testament prophets. It is. Right, over and over and over and over and over. You cannot understand the book of, of Revelation unless you read all the prophets, because they all point to the same area, which is the region of Syria, Iraq, and Turkey. Amen. And so, okay, so you, um, back, uh, you know, 2003, you were mentioning, and Joel, of course, is, is starting to write his material as well at this time. And this is in the aftermath of 9-11, uh, where America is maybe shaking awake a little bit, to the realities of what of what Islam is and what it t really teaches, um, I know f from my side I had been looking at this um, area back in 1999. I don't I didn't put anything in on the web about it. Of course, it was all you know kind of personalized and and I wonder what's happening in Iraq. This is so weird. And what about these Shia guys? What does all this mean? So you've got this down now. You actually started writing things in the early part of the decade, and is this what became the book that we see available now, Coming Bible Prophecy yeah. Reformation? Uh, I started, actually I started by writing short articles on the internet in 2008, okay? And at the time I, I, I was just getting familiar with Joe Richardson and Walid Shabbat and we, we became friends, we used to, to have, we, we used to have phone conversations all the time. And uh, what I did is, uh, Joe himself and Walid himself, both of them told me to put, put a book together. And this was not my intention at the beginning. And then three other people told me the same thing, that I should put a book together. And I realized, uh oh, I think God is talking to me. Yes. He's using people to tell me something. Right. And I, I decided to uh, do a lot of research. And that's when I went to the library. I got history books. You read the book yourself. You'll see that I quote a lot of history, like ancient uh, Roman history, Greek, Grecian history, uh, Islamic history, and uh, I, I actually also, I put together some of my old articles into one chapter, which is chapter 6, uh, about the uh, Middle Eastern Antichrist, pointing to the region of uh, Syria, Iraq, Turkey, 
And I is and not only I use history, but I also use the prophets in the Old Testament, which all point to the same region. They never point to Italy or England or Germany or Spain. They all talk about the same region, the, the Assyrian, the king of Babylon, Gog of Magog. And if you look at a map of the Middle East in Bible times, and you look, and you look at a map today, it's always talking about the same area, Middle East, not the European continent. Right. And why would God want to confuse us? I mean, that's my bottom line of it, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, why change the subject at the very end? And so how did this happen? I mean, it would, especially in the New Testament, there is no qualms about naming the city of Rome, right? No. We have the letter of Paul to the Romans, right? We have talks about Italy and Macedonia and all these places. So what's the big deal about naming it if that's the facts? So how do you think, what is the, the cause of people to, to look in this direction? How did this happen? I think that Rome became sort of a uh, eschatological scapegoat for the Protestant Christians. Uh, if, if, if Rome is Babylon, why is it that Paul never called Rome Babylon? I mean, he wrote a, a letter to Rome. Why didn't he say that Rome was Babylon? Right. And we never find a literal reference to Rome being destroyed in the Bible. People can argue that uh, the, the, the harlot in Revelation is Rome based on the seven hills of Rome and, and this and that. But if you check the original Greek, it is not talking about hills. It's talking about mountains. And mountains refer to empires, kingdoms. If you look in Jeremiah 51.25, God calls Babylon the destroying mountain that comes back in the end times as an empire. And if you look at the reference, the geographical references in Jeremiah 51 and Isaiah 13, it, 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 it always refers to the land of the Chaldeans or the Chaldeans. And if you look at a map of the Chaldeans, this is modern day Iraq, southern Iraq. Right. Or north, north of Saudi Saudi Arabia. It's never talking about Italy, the Vatican, none of that stuff. Yeah. So how did, uh, like you say, it, it, I think you're right in um, you know the Protestant Reformation and all that. Uh, I think it was very easy to pin all these negative prophetic things onto the church, the Catholic Church that they just broke away from. That, that's easy. That's logical. I understand that. Uh, you want to have an enemy there. You want to say, come out of her, my people, meaning come join my denomination instead, right? Yes. Uh, so that's basically where it all came from. And then um, from there, they uh, people are selectively finding bits and pieces, like a verse here or a verse there, to make it, to shoehorn it into that theory. Is that basically what you, what you see? Yes. Yeah. Uh, and one thing about uh, the verse in Revelation 18 that says, Come out of her, my people, that verse comes out of uh, Jeremiah 51. Jeremiah uses the same phrase, come out of her. And when you look at the uh, rest of the chapter, Jeremiah is referring to a land near the river Euphrates in Babylon. He's not talking about somewhere in Italy. Right. He's right. being very specific, geographically speaking. Right. And that's, again, like I was saying earlier, like you're trying to teach folks is that um, Revelation is just quoting these guys. There's, yeah. there's no real new, inf of course, um, there's some new Revelation in it, but there's not a new idea all of a sudden that they're saving, God is saving to the very last book that he never brought up before, that no one has any idea about, that he's naming locations that no one would know, uh, you know, f uh, nations that don't exist yet. And all these things. So I completely agree with that. That's is, this is what um, this is what has kind of snookered folks in to say, well, this must be talking about the Catholics. And even today, and I'm an ex-Catholic, by the way. I was born and raised till about 15 years old. Um, but so I know kind of you know the ins and outs a little bit. And there's, obviously, there's problems with it, and uh, there's reasons why I'm not any longer. But to pin all this stuff, even today, uh, every day on, you know, I'm big on social media, as, as you know, and um, every day there's some friend of mine or another saying the Pope is the false prophet, the Pope is the Antichrist, look at Pope Francis doing X, Y, or Z. I'm like, 
oh, God. I can't reply to all of it, you know. <laughs> but at some point, you got to say, look, um, that's fine. This guy maybe is, is, is a rube. You know, maybe he's clueless. Maybe he's even being influenced by the devil somehow. But to pin it all and say he's this guy or this office is definitely him – I'm like, I need some, you know, let's be real about this. Let's uh, let's go to the scriptures, please. Stop posting headlines or, you know, things that you want to happen. Let's just stick with the, with the scriptures. Okay, so enough of my opinions there. Okay, so the bottom line is people want to know, okay, Rodrigo, uh, we believe in this uh, European model because, as my experience has been, as yours was, most of the people will just go to what's written about it by other men. Right. Yes. They don't actually go to the scriptures. They go to books about it because yeah. I don't know why they don't feel smart enough or they don't think there's time to digest. it. I don't know, but it's human nature, I guess. They go right to someone who's already wrote about it and they tell them what to think. So uh, they they're listening to this program right now. They're seeing you They're saying, all right, Mr. Smarty Pants, tell me why Antichrist and the, his kingdom cannot be based in Europe. Tell me why. Well, first of all. We cannot blame all these guys for believing these things because these things have been taught for for many centuries. And we have to understand that the book of Daniel was sealed until the end times. And these prophecies would not be understood until the unsealing of the book of Daniel, which I personally believe is starting to happen right now as we speak. True. Because events in the Middle East and... I even mentioned this back in 2009 when I wrote the book. I, I mentioned it's not my book that's going to change people's minds. It's events in the Middle East that are going to change people's minds. What I'm trying to do is just look ahead of the curve and show them what's going to happen. But it's not my writing that's going to change their minds. It's the events, you know, the rise of the caliphate, yes. Islam becoming more and more radical in the Middle East. This is what this is what's going to people's people's minds, not what I wrote, not what I think. What I what I did is I was just trying to not to predict it because I'm not a prophet. I was just trying to show people what the Bible says about this region and where the Bible points to in re, in regards to the rise of the Antichrist and his empire. Right. So to expand on that a little bit. You mentioned Daniel seven, and I talk about this all the time on my show. The the animals that are mentioned in Revelation 13 are are, yeah. are specific for a reason. That's supposed to point us to Daniel 7. So uh, tell us why those animals represent the Middle Eastern kingdoms and would exclude Europe. Because in Daniel 7, God gives Daniel his pers his perspective on what empires are uh, in comparison to Daniel 2. What which shows us a uh, man's perspective of, of what empires are. Men see empires as, as uh, a representation of themselves, right? See, Nebuchadnezzar, King Nebuchadnezzar was the head of gold. Hmm. But from God's perspective, empires rep are, are the um, embodiment of beast animals that come to destroy and conquer. And... I, I believe I believe that Daniel seven is the same subject of Daniel chapter two from a different perspective, from God's perspective, not from man's perspective. Yeah, that that makes sense. Okay, so now we've got the same, like you say, uh, you uh, Daniel interprets the dream, right? He says yeah. you Nebuchadnezzar are the head of gold, so yeah. that means Babylon. Pretty simple, Babylon. right? It's very simple, right? So and the, the one that comes after is the Middle Persian Persian Empire. Right, and we read about that even in Daniel that night that yep. it happens, right, and the writing on the wall and, and the whole the whole story there. The Persians actually invade, and and now it's their turn to be a to be the uh, the kingdom of the Middle East. And then you, we all know the story of Alexander after that uh, conquering the Persians. We know that from history, like your book points out. Um, so we have these okay, we have these three kingdoms. Great. Now, for some reason. Folks want to look at chapter 7 all of a sudden and reassign these kingdoms to other places, right? I've, I can't tell you how many times I've heard the lion is uh, the United States or 
Great Britain or some somewhere in Europe, and the bear is Russia, of course, because we all know that you know a hundred years ago a, a symbol for a nation is what God was talking about, uh, and everyone thinks that. And then the leopard, everyone's kind of confused. Some people say it was Germany. Some people say it's some kind of Indian thing. I don't know. So why why don't are you just saying, hey? It's just repeating itself. God t already told you what the kingdoms were. Here they are again. Is that basically the message of that chapter? Yes, and I, I believe the problem is uh, people are trying to read the scriptures with the uh, Western mindset. And they forget the uh, fact that Daniel was a Middle Eastern prophet and the Bible is a Middle Eastern book. Uh, and I believe that God was showing Daniel things that would happen in his native region, not somewhere far, far away from where he lives. Right. And, and some people, they, they, they try to make Daniel 7 point to modern powers like the U.S., Britain, France, because of the phrase, these are four kings that shall arise from the earth. But if you look into the original Aramaic, it doesn't say that at all. It says four kings that arise out of the earth. This is talking about a, um, a present tense kingdom that, sh that is arising at the time of Daniel and kings that would, kingdoms that will follow. This is not talking about somewhere far into the future. Uh, what Daniel says is that the fourth kingdom actually is a combination of the three first kingdoms if you compare it to Reve Revelation 13 which is a return of Babylon, uh, Middle Persia, and, and Greece. Right, and that's all combined. They are all, com they, they all return combined, combined into one kingdom. Yeah, see now, that's simple, right? I, I, don't, that's very simple. I don't know how you could misconstrue uh, that or be confused by it. Now, I understand it might be a new concept to some folks, or it might be alien. They never heard anything like this, but to say it's not it's confusing or you're doing gymnastics and things of that nature I, I, that's i don't understand how you could arrive at that at all like you say well i mean it's just a restatement right she's he's just clarifying yeah. even daniel 2 if you go back to daniel 2 it says that the gold the, the silver the iron and the uh the clay they are all destroyed by the messiah when he right, comes together back. right okay uh, which means that the gold is going to be present again in the future. It's not only Babylon of old, but Babylon must again be present as the head. Because the gold, the, the silver, the, the, the brass, and the iron are all destroyed at the same time together when the stone comes out of heaven and strikes the image. Simple as could be. Frontline, this is Christopher Manti with a special guest, Rodrigo Silva, author of The Coming Bible Prophecy reformation out now go to amazon and find it and buy it and uh it's available electronically and paper correct right. good yes so order it up however it's most convenient to you it will be well worth it it is very inexpensive and you will thank yourself for buying it and reading it and sharing it hopefully with your pastor or, or leadership in your church but to anyone with an interest in prophecy and who doesn't right now <laughs> it's good the numbers are dwindling the people who are ignoring prophetic scriptures so uh thank god for that and books like yours are really going to help folks i think so okay like you say events uh, that they're that they've been taught over the years uh are not happening right this european no, model seems silly right now i mean it's ridiculous yeah. um so they see islam they see iran they see iraq uh, isis they see a, a turkish power um, they're they're like okay maybe I should be looking there but I was told that Islam is going to be destroyed before this stuff ever goes down so what role we know the uh, geographic areas now so what about Islam in this whole scenario how does it tie in um, it, it goes back to Daniel chapter 2 because Daniel chapter 2 verse 40 if I'm not mistaken says that the fourth kingdom should crush all the first three kingdoms, which was Babylon, Middle Persia, and Greece. 
If you study the history of the Roman Empire, you learn that by AD 116, they reached Babylon for only a few months and then they retreated from the area. Now, if you study the history of Islam, you will learn that Islam conquered Babylon, Islam conquered Persia, and Islam conquered Turkey, Greece, went all the way to Spain, Austria, and crushed, literally crushed the entire culture of these countries. If you go back to pre-Islamic times, um, Babylon spoke Aramaic, but today Babylon, Iraq, speaks Arabic. If you go back to uh, Egyptian times, prior to Islamic history, e Egyptians, they, they spoke uh, Egyptian, but today they speak Arabic. Uh, and you can see how liter literal was the fulfillment of Daniel chapter 2, verse 40, that the fourth kingdom had to crush all the other three kingdoms. And if you look at Rome, Rome never did that. True, right? And, you know, a lot of folks are um, not willing to hear that part, I, I guess. <laughs> it's By the way, it's verse 35. I just double-checked this year. Yeah, yeah 235, and that's it lays it out right there. It's that they're all crushed together. That has to tell you something. <laughs> yep, they are all crushed together. At the same time, when the stone that comes out of heaven strikes the image, the gold, the silver, the brass, and the iron and the clay are all smashed into pieces together at the same time. And this is talking about the return of these kingdoms in the last days. And basically what you're saying is Islam is what unites, uh, is what gives it the common culture and language, yeah. right? Um, and that's, um, that's, that's part of the, the deal. There's no Islam without total capitulation right you you have to no. conquer everything about the land not just the religion but the the money the right the judicial system we're seeing that you know all over the place now yeah you you're you're subject to sh the sharia and that's it and your language has to be changed and everything about you has to be different um and you're right who else could rome certainly never did that rome rome didn't do that t to anyone Really, right? They they conscripted folks, local folks, into the army. Um, they didn't try to necessarily convert them to believe in Roman gods. They don't really care about that. They just want you to behave, right? Um, Pax Romana, that whole thing. So it doesn't really fit at all that any that um, a Roman uh, beast uh, would have in history crushed anything and certainly not no. today when it doesn't even exist but even if it did it hasn't done anything yet you know i'm waiting for these great exploits and these these this great conqueror to come out and start uh conquering land like like in babylon which we have already um how do you see um uh, isis versus um of course that's the the current babylon isis controls it basically and now we have the new medo persian which is the the mullahs of iran uh how do you see this playing out between them is there a power struggle coming is there war coming what there might be a power struggle in the beginning but they'll they'll ultimately they will join they will join forces uh, if you look at Revelation, Revelation 13, it says the beast has the feet of a bear. And we know from Daniel 7 that the bear represents Persia. And if you look in Daniel 7, verse 7, it says that the beast tramples with its feet. Or, in other words, that the beast destroys everything in its path with, with its feet. And the feet of the, the beast belong to the bear in Revelation. This is talking about Iran or Persia being the military force of the beast kingdom. Now, Iraq, Babylon, it talks about the beast having the mouth of a lion and the body of a leopard. This means that eventually they will be all united for a common cause, which is to persecute the people of God. And the fightings in between Muslims, uh, you have the Shiites and the Sunnis hating each other, fighting each other, and that's even mentioned in Daniel chapter 11, when you see the king that the fights between the kings of the north and the kings of the south in the end times. Uh, I personally see it as a block of Shiites fighting against a block of Sunni nations. 
and that would be interesting indeed, <laughs> would it not? Then where is the uh, room for any other interpretation? I mean, at a certain point, like you said, facts on the ground, right? This is going to dictate yeah. what people are beginning to believe, and they're going to see wow, where is the alternative here? <laughs> this is it, or it's all junk, right? Either the Bible's totally <laughs> wrong, or this is it. And people, you know, today, people can accuse me and accuse Joel of being newspaper exegesis. Mm -hmm. You know, they, we look at the current headlines and we say, oh, this means right. that. But like I said in the beginning, if people are willing to spend a little money and buy this book, which was written back in 1938, and also this book written back in 1956, they will see that these guys were not following news headlines. They were actually going against the uh, the mo the, the uh, preaching of the day, which was telling believers that Rome had to come back in the future. But these guys were saying, no, 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 it's not Rome. It's Islam. Islam must return. And they, they, they didn't have the news headlines that we have right. today. They didn't have ISIS. They didn't have Iran trying to acquire nuclear weapons. They didn't see all any of that stuff right. back in, in 1938, 1956. Right, they're just going on what the Bible said. Look at that. And going back, G.H. Uh, Lang, he wrote his book 10 years before Israel became a nation. Mm. Right? Mm -hmm. he, he, wrote, he wrote in 1938, and Israel became a nation in 1948. So he was already foreseeing the return of the Jews to the land of Israel and Islam rising again in a future caliphate beast empire. And he said back then, 80 years, 80 years ago, that Babylon and Assyria would be the center of this new caliphate. You mentioned Assyria a few times now. Uh, and the lands of Iraq what well, today, or, or yesterday, were Iraq, Syria, and Turkey. Those uh, borders apparently have been erased for the most part. Um, is this the land that you are looking for when the Antichrist, the little horn, does rise up is this the land we should be looking to personally i think this is the land because in micah chapter chapter five it's uh micah associates the antichrist the assyrian with the land of nimrod right yes if you go back to genesis chapter 10 10 verses 8 through 11 you learn where the land of nimrod was and all the cities he built and one city in particular was the city called Iraq, and that's where the name Iraq comes from, if you look at the etymology of the word Iraq. It comes from Iraq, which is mentioned in Genesis chapter 10. That is true, and let me just read it right here. The beginning of his kingdom was Babel and Erek and Achad and Kalne in the land of Shinar. From that land he went forth I into a city. Yeah, uh, it's right there. <laughs> And from there, from there, he went forth and built Nineveh. N Nineveh is the modern city of Mosul in, in northern Iraq. Correct. And that's the land of Nimrod that Micah 5 is referring to. Right. And, of course, that's been, do you want to talk about headlines? There's all kinds of uh, Mosul headlines here the past year, year and a half. Um, this is where the Islamic State has uh, concentrated their early fire and really wanted to conquer that city and it was so to me it was so meaningful in the spirit realm so to speak uh to see that happen to see you know joe of course jonah is said to be buried there and and all the rest of it it's so um spiritually important that they conquered that area and all of a sudden now we have a caliphate in the land of iraq in the land of nineveh this is starting to make a whole lot of sense, and maybe guys like Rodrigo Silva are correct. So we have to reevaluate, maybe. I hope the church takes this message seriously. Uh, one more time, this is Frontline. Christopher Manti here with you, as always, in CMV TV. Uh, if you're watching live, fantastic. Thank you. Or if it's uh, in the archive on my YouTube channel, I appreciate that as well. We're here with Rodrigo Silva, author of a book that took quite a while to write and release, but it is worth it. It is worth it. The Lord made sure it came out. And he made sure of it, and he's going to make sure that people hear about it and know about it as well. It's called The Coming Bible Prophecy Reformation. The author, Rodrigo Silva, is on with us for uh, just a few more moments. I don't want to keep him forever here. Um, 
so okay we have history on your side uh, we have the, the scriptures on your side uh, we have the traditions of man on the other side it sounds like this is a pretty good deal to where to cast our our lot so to speak uh, we were looking to this ancient uh, land of Assyria for the Antichrist but before that we have this this confederacy right coming together and obviously there's nothing like that yet um, no what is your guess um, or more than a guess so what do you know uh, about how this um, uh, confederation will happen and how soon do you expect it I think we are going to, we are going to see more wars between Islam uh, between the Shiites and the Sunnis until they eventually form a confederacy of 10 nation states or 10 regions. I cannot say for sure it's going to be 10 countries or 10 regions that covers the entire Middle East or North Africa. But if you look at, uh, at, at the ambitions of ISIS, they already have a map of what they want to control, which is the entire Middle East, North Africa, and parts of the European continent. I don't believe they reach the European continent. I, I believe they'll stay within the uh, reach of the Middle East and North Africa for many, many reasons that I explain in the book. And prior to the rise of the Antichrist, there will be a confederacy of nations. And the Antichrist rises after that confederacy is put in place. And he comes as the 11th king that will wage war against the confederacy and he will conquer three of the ten nations and eventually the other seven are going to give him their political power okay so then and how, how far away do you think this is well these things can take 10 years 20 years to take place we we don't know for sure we can't know for mm -hmm. sure but uh we we now we can see the embryo that gives birth to this yeah i agree with that and by the, and the I want to give credit also, I mentioned those books, but I want to give credit to Philip Goodman. This, this is his book he wrote back in 1993, and it's called the, the Assyrian Connection. And back then, he was already talking about events happening in Syria and Iraq that would give rise to the Antichrist in that region of the world. Hmm, interesting. Did he reference the Gulf War uh, as, a, as a catalyst for this in that book? I, I don't remember whether he mentioned that or not, but he said in the book that uh, the Bible refers to the Antichrist as a leader rising in the land of old Assyria, which is today Syria and right, Iraq. Right, and you're right. I mean, that's a that's a forerunner for sure uh, before any of, any of us. I don't want to say that ISIS is already the Antichrist no. because we don't see a confederacy in right. place yet of 10 Yes, no, I agree with that completely. But ISIS might cause wars that will drive the nations of the Middle East to form a confederacy of ten kings, of ten nations. And you can certainly see that as true, because yes. they're threatening uh, Iran, they're threatening Saudi Arabia, they're blowing up places in Saudi Arabia and Kuwait already, right? They're attacked, they're in Libya, they're in yes. uh, Tunisia, right? They're in all these places where they're not seen, <laughs> they're not seen as, a, as a friend uh, at all to these other nations, so uh, they are definitely pushing the buttons, right? Um, they are. Yeah, yes, so they, they are. could, that could certainly be a, a catalyst, as you, as you said. Um, so, and I agree, we're not going to uh, see, we're far away from that the Antichrist himself rising from this. I don't think ISIS is going to produce that. Um, but like you say, they are very ambitious, uh, but that's kind of in the DNA of true Islam, right? They, the, the caliphate yes. is a necessary component for their, for victory, right? For the, for the In their view, for God to be reigning on the earth, the caliphate must exist, and it must be as broad, I mean, they'd like it to be the whole earth, obviously, uh, but to be as broad as possible and to be under one uh, caliph and that's kind of the goal of whether you're an ISIS or Iran or anybody else right that's your ultimate goal and people people are so fearful of ISIS that they cannot see the other problem that's rising in front of us which is the Shiite side of Islam okay because ISIS is a Sunni mm -hmm. sect of Islam 
And the Bible says that both sects, because the fourth kingdom will be divided, mm -hmm. right? Daniel yep. says. Uh, so we must expect both the Sunni side of Islam and the Shiite side of Islam to rise and form a caliphate in that region of the world, not just the Sunni side. Right. And what 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 do folks expect to happen to the Iranians? To just all go away, or to, for 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 Shia uh, belief just to disappear, uh, just because they're a smaller minority, and they are, and they are. They are, and in fact, Daniel chapter 11, ver 11 verse 21 says that the Antichrist will have a small following. Right, small people, right. Which, which leads me to believe that the Antichrist comes from the Shiite side of Islam instead of the Sunni side. I could be wrong about this. I say in the book many times, this is what I personally believe, but I could be wrong about this. So I'm just trying to give people a guide so they can watch the region and do their own research. I don't claim to be right about anything. I try to, I try to take a very humble approach in the book. Uh, for example, in chapter five, I talk about all the different views of the uh, head wound of the beast, which empire comes back to life. Uh, I, I quote Joe, for example, and Walid Shubat. They both believe it's the rise of the Ottoman Empire that comes back. Uh, I quote Michael Beck, who believes the uh, Grecian Empire comes back to life, and I quote other people, uh, as, uh, for example, I quote this guy in the book, Philip Goodman, who believes that the Assyrian Empire is the empire that comes back to life, and I write my own personal view, which I believe is the Babylonian Empire, but I don't take the approach of only showing my personal view, I show all the different views so people can have a broader, a, broad, a broader understanding of what's taking place in the Middle East. Right, you're not dogmatic, basically, about it. No, I'm not dogmatic. Mm -hmm. I the, 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 whole, the whole point of the book is not to pinpoint which nation the Antichrist comes from, but to lead people away from the European Union to the Middle East, Islam, Caliphate. Yes, amen. That's the whole point. If you look at the title, if you look at the title of the book, uh, it's called the Coming Bible Prophecy Reformation. But if you look at the subtitle, I write something down there in small letters, which is shifting from the European to the Middle Eastern end time paradigm. So my, my whole point is not to pinpoint what nation, whether it is Turkey, Syria, Iraq, Iran, but to point people to that area, to the general area of, of the Middle right. East. Right, shift the focus, just a little south. Yeah, shift the focus. <laughs> Stop looking at the Pope, stop, stop looking at the European common market, start looking at Islam, because that's where everything happens. I give, I give my personal reasons why I believe Iraq is the nation to watch for, but like I say, it's my personal view. It's nothing to be followed by anybody as doctrine. It's just my personal opinion yes. about it, which can be wrong, you know. I'm not... I'm not a dogmatic guy who say, oh, he must come from that area. I just point, I give the reasons why I believe he comes from that area. But I also quote other writers like Joe, like Walid, and other people who believe he comes from Turkey. And that's fine. It's, it's not a problem for me where he comes from, you know, what nation, but what the, the general area where he comes from that I want people to Yeah, amen. At. I completely agree with that. And your work has been much appreciated by a lot of folks. Like obviously, Joel mentioned you. Uh, we have um, a lot of serious people who are looking at this subject anew uh, because of works like yours. And um, you know, I just want to let folks know that it's um, it's scholarly. This book, uh, it's sober. Uh, like Rodrigo mentioned, it's not dogmatic. It lays out several opinions about, uh, within the proper framework about how it could happen, and it's not um it's not something that uh you know uh, it's a, not a personal thing obviously it's not about uh, the author it's not about uh, pumping up a, an individual or a church or anything like that uh it's just getting using the bible god is saying don't look here look here and that's right. the i think that's the bottom line point to your work and um I sincerely appreciate it, and I want other folks to, um, and obviously any of the listeners or viewers here, to pick it up and consider it seriously. Uh, if you're not of this uh, understanding yet, at least 
run it through the old mill and see what the Holy Spirit does. Because in my yes. experience, he, he'll do a lot. If, you, if you're willing to learn, right, if you're willing to be uh, malleable and, and uh, formable like clay, then he will do a lot of work inside you. And um, so, again, I wanted to thank you. And just uh, as, a, as a final thought here, um, it, the Reformation is happening. I don't know at, at what stage it is exactly, but, uh, for example, this very week, maybe even uh, Monday, we might have a collapse of the European Union. Uh, or at least one piece of it, right? Um, Greece is looking like they're out of there. Uh, and uh, People are going to throw their hands up and say, wait a minute, <laughs> what is going on here? I don't understand anything. And I think the danger of that, uh, of not considering this uh, work of yours and others like it, is to, to say, now you're going to doubt the Bible itself because you thought this is the way it's going to be, now it's not. Maybe it's all wrong. Maybe it's all uh, just a waste of time. Forget it. I don't understand this prophecy thing. I'm just ready to go in the rapture. I'm out of here. Who cares uh, what the details are? That's the To me, that's the deadliest um, trap we can get in, is to not all of a sudden not care and not think it's worth it to search the scriptures. So um, we're, we're on the road, and maybe... You know, this week will prove to be uh, impactful, or uh, maybe it won't, but uh, I hopefully you will keep at it and just keep hammering away on what the, the at least this part of the truth. You don't have it all, I don't have it all, none of us have all the answers, um, but there are certain things we can stand on, and so this thing I think you. You are standing on, and you should continue to do so. Um, any uh, last messages you want to get out there for, for the folks about uh, either your work or um, something coming up in the future, however you want to, to uh, do a send-off here to the, to the folks, what should they take away most of all from this book of yours? Uh, I believe they should uh, take away the overall message of the book which is trying to warn people about what's about to take place in the world uh, they are expecting something to happen which is never going to happen in my personal humble opinion and in Amos 3 7 God says he does nothing without first revealing it to his servants the prophets we are not prophets in the prediction sense we are prophets because we speak for God and I believe God has been raising people to reveal things to these people so we can warn the body of Christ to what, about, to what is about to take place. Um, and I think people must pay attention. Uh, I encourage them not to buy only my book, but I encourage them to buy the books that I showed here, books that, are, that were written 80, 80 years ago. This is not a new idea. This is not a Walid Shabbat idea. This is not a Joe Richardson idea. This is not a Rodrigo Silva idea. This this thing has been has been talked is has been being talked about for the past century already. But these these people are not known. You know these books are not known by the majority of people out there, and they should read these books and realize that these guys predicted what's taking place now almost a century ago and half a century ago. Amen. And we are, we like it or not, sometimes we are watchmen on the wall because we see what's coming, not because of any special gift, but because it's, it's written and no. uh, we just are repeating what God has said. And I, I remember talking to Joe back in 2008, and this was, like I said, way before Joe became a giant in the Christian media, way before his book was published by WND. Uh, and we were having this conversation, and we sort of uh, predicted that in about 10 to 15 years, uh, this whole European Roman Antichrist teaching would start to collapse, and that Islam would start to be to become more prominent in, in the Middle East. And it's happening. And that's what drove me to write a book called The, Bible Proph the Coming Bible Prophecy Reformation, because I wanted to look ahead of the curve and say, well, look, this is going to happen. People are going to leave the European Antichrist idea behind, and they're going to embrace the Islamic end-time paradigm, or the Islamic end-time teaching that Joe and Walid have, have been promoting for the past decade. 
yeah and hopefully hey let's pray for it to be eight months instead of eight years and really get folks um, engaged and frankly because the end of the day this is all fine and dandy but it's to prepare for martyrdom um, right yes. because th this is serious we're facing a serious foe obviously the the, the devil has no qualms about taking taking our uh, taking us out at all um, if we're talking about the Saints we're talking about you know believers and and the Jews the hatred um, for us in Islam is 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 written uh, in every page of what they're taught for as uh, from the time they're children so this is serious business and we have to be ready to if needed right this is not the Islamic version of martyrdom the Christian version is kill me if you must right yes. and so that's I think that's what we have to prepare our hearts for and our children for so this is really serious stuff but until we understand what the beast is where he is uh, where the Antichrist comes from we're never gonna fully appreciate or be uh, prepared in our heart and our soul to to face what's coming so Rodrigo, I appreciate you, man, so very much for, for coming on with me. And anytime you want to come back, if there's a new book or a new headline that uh, we, we need, you need to get something out there, just let me know. I'll throw you on. Not a problem. And I appreciate you being with me, sir. And uh, hopefully it won't take eight years, but however long it does take, we thank the Lord for using you, my brother. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks You're for welcome, having sir. me.
Yes, my friends, welcome back. Live now, we're getting on front line a little after 6 p.m. in the Eastern Time Zone of the United States. Resist the Beast. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the Rodrigo Silva interview. It was um, extensive. I tried to hit on as many um, pertinent questions as I can. I really didn't even scratch the surface of the book. Um, it's just very in-depth and scholarly, you know, like I was saying in the interview to Rodrigo, is that there's not bluster and hype and trying to, there's no self-promotion, there's no promotion of a church or an organization or a denomination or anti any of that either. It's just making the case like a, like a lawyer would in front of a jury to say this is the deal. This is the source material. This is history. This is current events. This is what you were taught. That is not true. And that's probably the main focus that I want to get across is if you're waiting for a European empire led by Rome to rise and fulfill Bible prophecy, you are wrong. It is never going to happen. It's just that simple. Like Brother Rodrigo told us, he quoted the Word of God, and I'm going to read it again. In Amos, Amos chapter 3, verse 7, Surely the Lord God does nothing unless he reveals his secret to his servants, the prophets. Other translations will say, until he first reveals it to his prophets. What does that mean? <laughs> that means, even though we're 2,000 years out from Christ, from the Messiah walking the earth, and he's about to come back, there's still nothing new in the New Testament. It's all in the prophets. He told us in the prophets where the Antichrist system would be, where the empire would be, where and where it would not be. There's nothing in the prophets. Amos, Daniel, Isaiah, Jeremiah. Who did we re-reference about half a dozen in that interview? And you can look in every other one, too. And there's no Europe in there. There's no European power. There's no Roman Empire. There's no Roman Empire in the New Testament, prophetically speaking. Yeah, there was one when Messiah was walking the earth. That's one of the empires. There's seven of them. But that's, it's dead and gone. Forever. That's not the one that trampled all the others. And that's not the one that comes back. And that colors everything about your understanding of the future. If you believe that. And this is the point. This is the mission that Rodrigo has or was given by the Lord, which is to warn the church, stop looking at the wrong place. I wish I had a little globe uh, graphic right here. Go from Europe, go to the south, to the Middle East, because that's where all of it happens. That's where all of it did happen. All that action, no matter what, Moses, Egypt, right? the Garden of Eden is in the Middle East, the land of Israel, obviously, is in the Middle East. Egypt in the Middle East. The persecutions of the Jews, who? All these Hittites and the, and the Philistines and the uh, 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 Amorites and Bashan. And, I mean, you name it, on the Midianites and uh, Edom and Ammon and on and on and on and on and on. All the Middle East. The kingdoms who persecuted the Jews, Egypt obviously was there. Babylon obviously is in the Middle East. Assyria obviously in the Middle East. We just went over that ad nauseum with Rodrigo. Um, even when uh, we're talking about in history now, the Greek takeover. When the Persians came in. Where are the Persians? That's Iran. That's the Middle East. When the Greeks came in and they, uh, what you call Hellenized everything, right? There was, this is kind of extra biblical. It's kind of mentioned there in, some people say in Daniel, but in the book of Maccabees and things like that. Um, 
It talks about uh, Greek uh, take. Oh, you've heard of Antiochus Epiphanes, right? The evil, wicked king of the Greeks. He, 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 people say he was uh, the abomination of desolation and all that. So it was bad. Okay, the bad stuff of the Greeks happened against the Jews in the Middle East and the Romans crucified Jesus in the Middle East, persecuted the believers, okay? And then Islam came from the Arabia in the Middle East and persecuted believers in the Middle East, took over the lands of the Middle East. Do you get the picture? That's your that's your um, seven kingdoms. Egypt, Babylon, or Assyria first, Babylon, uh, Persia, Greece, or Yavin, Rome, the Islamic Empire, who the last version of it was headed in Turkey, called the Ottoman Empire. That was the one abolished in 1923. That's the seventh. That's seven. Where do they all have in common? 99% of all those are in the Middle East. I mean, the only the capital city of Greece and Rome were not in the actual Middle Eastern areas. But even then, they're all in the Mediterranean area. And Yavin, or all those islands where Turkey and Greece come together. And by the way, I don't think this is a coincidence that the fall of Europe is happening uh, beginning in Greece. He's shifting your focus, going down the map. Go, keep going. Now you're in Turkey. Oh, maybe we should look there instead and start to process this, right? Okay. A lot. Hey, let me finish. I only read one verse. I want to read verse eight in Amos four, uh, three. Amos three, verse eight. So we've established that God will, will not do anything until He tells His prophets first, which are the prophets. So you can go there to find out all these details. All right, verse 8 says, A lion has roared. Hmm, the lion, Babylon. Who will not fear? The Lord God has spoken. Who can but prophesy? Like Rodrigo said, we're just repeating the words of the Lord. And that means you're a prophet. Like it or not. Don't be afraid of man or man's traditions, or even in your church or your friends. It's okay. It's going to, uh, the Lord will use you. Stick to the word of God, not the word of man, and you'll be all right. Don't look to Russia when you're looking for the bear. Don't look to England or wherever for the lion. The lion is in Babylon. Who's the Lion of Babylon? You've heard me say it a lot. It's obvious. So there you have it, Rodrigo Silva. Coming Bible Prophecy Reformation. You'll see a link at the bottom of the YouTube video directly to his book in, on Amazon.com. Um, he does not have a web page per se other than the Facebook page, which has about 1,200 fans, I guess, at this point. It needs to be a lot better and bigger. But please just look it up. Search at the top of Facebook. Just type in The Coming Bible Prophecy Reformation. And there it is. And you'll have lots of updates about news items that come in. Kind of similar to Armageddon News and so forth. Um, I re highly recommend that. Give uh, Rodrigo's current perspective on uh, events that are happening and how it lines up with his book. And that's the basic... Um, the gist of it, again, is warning. is saying, wake up, because you're going to miss this. You're going to miss this. And there's no rapture to save you from this. You have to understand. Um, so, and then after the video, of course, you saw Wings of the Eagle. Uh, to prepare, I thought it was important to play that message. And that's the, the consistency here of the broadcast. Uh, to prepare for what's to come. Prepare for the beast to face it. And to face martyrdom. Ultimately, that could be your destiny. You have to admit that and say it out loud and process it, pray about it, you and your family. Yes, it's possible. No matter what you believe about theology, it's going to happen the way it's written, whether you understand it or not. It's like the Pharisees and the Sadducees on 
uh, talking to Jesus, they had it all figured out. They figured, they thought, oh, this guy he doesn't know what he's talking about. We know we're the ones entrusted with the law and the prophets and the Torah, and we carry the scrolls. We know what's going on. No, you didn't. You were supposed to, but you failed because you loved your traditions more than what was written by God. You don't believe the prophets. You believe yourself. You believe your extra biblical books and some things never change Talmud is not the Bible the catechism is not the Bible uh, your church uh, bylaws are not the Bible your how Lindsay is not the Bible left behind movies TV are not the Bible your tradition saying the Pope is Antichrist or false prophet is not the Bible. Stick to it. Rodrigo was deceived by it. I was deceived by it. By what? By listening to man instead of going to the source. He and I had the same ex kind of experience. We depended on man's opinion about it. Well, I don't know. It's Bible, man. That's hard and scary. I'm, I'm just going to have to read this other thing over here by uh, whomever. Tim LaHaye back in the 90s. or Even folks today, the well-meaning, uh, a lot of people, they don't know what they're talking about. Because they're only going off other people's traditions. And they, they'll cite things for their wrong interpretations uh, with other traditions that they don't know anything about, like wedding traditions that are completely unbiblical. Anyway, um, that's the problem. That's pride. That's pride. That's thinking man knows and God does not, or you know better than God, or you've got it figured out already. You don't have to worry about having that relationship with the Creator. Because someone else took care of that. You just learn from them. Mm, yes. Prophets have written it. So, wake up. Wake up. Time is late. It's very late. The caliphate, the khalifa, is here. It's not in the future. It happened. Last June. Were you awake? It's still here. <laughs> Apparently, uh, you can go to war with it from the Jordan and Egyptians, and Saudi Arabians, and Qataris, and Ir Iranians, and America itself, oh America, can all fight it and say, we're going to take care of this one, this is easy, their JV team, blah, 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 nothing has defeated them, not even a little, they're conquering, and they're going to continue to conquer, it's a demonic, uh, support structure. The man can't defeat it. You can't beat an angel. Only the Lord can. He can send other angels. That's it. <laughs> right? We have many examples of this. How many did one angel, uh, how many men did one angel kill in one night? Speaking of uh, the Assyrians. A lot. There's no match. Okay? Um... We're going to have to align with the Lord on this and agree, let his word happen, and not get caught up in it, in our misunderstandings. We have to be willing to learn and be changed. I like it, like the trailer that we put together with for Rodrigo, that this, this kingdom is right there in front of our face. And there's no reason to look anywhere else. The evidence is plentiful. And every day on your TV and video screen. And yet you're more worried about a presidential election here. Or you're more worried about the Pope. Or you're more worried about whatever the Russians are doing. Or China. Come on, guys. Get serious, okay? If you love the Lord, get in his word, stick your nose in it. Don't depend on commentaries. 
You do it. Just you and the Lord. That's the way it's always been. Okay? That's good enough. And it will work. And ministries will rise up like I'm trying to do, like Rodrigo is. He'll, he'll tell you. He says, I don't have a ministry. I'm like, dude, yes, you do. Like Joel Richardson, who we had on a few weeks ago. Like Mark Davidson, who we've had on a month or two ago, who we're going to be having on again very soon. Because big news from from what he's um, teaching. Uh, like uh, Nelson Walters, who has a, a book that's... <laughs> I don't know if it's by the enemy or, or God's design, but it's been delayed a long time here. It's been done for months. Uh, but as far as getting it published or, you know, officially out to the masses and, and DVDs and websites and all the rest of it, it seems like things are being held up a little, but that could definitely be the Lord. I mean, the Lord is not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. So he'll wait to the very last moment. But that's again and again and again in scriptures, right way back to Sodom. All right? How many, all right, ten righteous guys, I won't destroy the city. All right? He'll go to the very end for that one sheep that's lost. But at a certain point, you get to the point where there are no lost sheep. They're just sheep that hate them. They don't want anything to do with them. And uh, then we can proceed. So we're near that point. And, uh, but it is interesting about things that are held up. And today, we just heard about uh, Glenn Beck. Um, say what you will about him. I don't know if you care about him or, or a fan or what. He's been an influence on me um, professionally. In radio, he's a just a fantastically gifted radio uh, person. But um, also, he's talked about the caliphate. The Lord has used him. You know, that doesn't mean he has everything right. It doesn't mean his theology is all right. I'm just saying he has been used by the Lord to bring this to the world and America's consciousness. And um, I believe the Lord wants us, uh, Wings of the Eagle, to advertise on Glenn Beck's program. And it's going to take a lot of money. So if, and I'm going to probably send out a mail about this soon, but if you go to wingsoftheeagle.com and there's a little donate now button, please hit that, uh, contribute to the cause to get us on Glenn Beck's airwaves, and it will happen. And the Lord will see to that. Uh, but uh, uh, I was talking about Glenn Beck, he's going off the air for like a month now because of health issues. So he's being attacked. Um, and he has a new book coming out in around September or August, August or September, saying again about the threat of Islam, and yes, Islam really is the problem. And so it's coming, it's slowly getting there where we're understanding, where God is revealing it. And it'll happen, all right? So let's partner and join with ministries that are in the forefront and on the, the razor's edge, so to speak, and if I'm one of those fantastic, um, I, when I say, I, you know, I just provide the platform, go to Wings of the Eagle, click on the network, you fellowship with other believers, and see where out throughout the world in the country that you are located, and get together. See what happens. And go to resistthebeast.net for clothing. Yes, clothing. I will not submit to Islam. Jesus Christ is my savior, for example. Resist the beast is one of my shirts. The other one, I stand with Israel against the beast. Important messages to have. Uh, brand new ones about uh, Isaiah 53, about witnessing through that. Um, about standing against the persecution of your brothers and sisters for their faith. It's all there. So go to resistedbeast.net, check it out. Until next time, I'm going to hang it up right there. This is Christopher Manti uh, for Frontline CMV TV. And I hope to see you next time. If God willing. And Lord, I praise you and thank you again for this time and for your word and for telling us in advance, Jesus. You said I foretold you all things in advance. And yes, you did. I testify that that is a true statement. You are the true and faithful witness, Jesus. Thank you. I thank you for the most supreme gift in the universe, the Holy Spirit, God himself, residing in us, your church. To bring your will and word to pass, and we await that glorious and fearful day when you return. Pour out your wrath on the world and establish your kingdom in Jerusalem. 
we await that day when we are redeemed fully. And until then, give us the strength to stand, fight the spiritual enemy, and expand the kingdom of light. Because it is growing darker. Shine, my friend. Shine all the brighter. In Jesus' name. Broadcasting on the show if you can find bright. Help each other. Be prepared for anything. Our war has just begun.